A new discovery doesn't have to be ancient or valuable to make it incredible. It just has to be interesting or amazing. Whether it's found under the sea, out in the furthest reaches of space, or right underneath our noses. We love it when we hear about those discoveries which make you stand back and say, wow. We're going to bring you the wow factor with the fantastic recent finds we're going to show you in this video. Even after all this time, we're still finding out more about the creatures which inhabited the world before humans, thanks to the discovery of fossil remains. This year, one of the most remarkable finds has been a four-legged whale with webbed feet, which scientists believe would have been capable of walking on land. The fossil is 43 million years old and has been found half a mile inland off the Pacific coast in Peru at a region called Playa Media Luna. We might now have to think again about where the first whales came from. It was previously believed that the first whales evolved around the South Asia region at around the same time that this one would have been swimming around South America. Because of its feet and its tail, it would have looked more like a beaver than a whale. But at 13 feet long, it's bigger than any beaver we've ever seen. The newly discovered creature has been named Paragocetus pacificus, which translates as the whale that reached the Pacific. As you probably already know, the Roman city of Pompeii was buried beneath a volcanic eruption in the year 79. The volcanic ash and lava petrified the city and its people, freezing some of the unfortunate citizens into rock as it descended upon them. The site is vast and complicated, and archaeologists are still active in Pompeii to this day, making fresh discoveries. This collection of strange objects is one of them. The items were found in a box inside a house known as Casa del Giardino, which translates as the House of the Garden. You could mistake it for a jewelry box. There are plenty of gems and amulets in there, which the owner would surely once have worn. The presence of some slightly more sinister items suggests a different origin, though. There are ornate bells, tiny humanoid dolls, and a shrunken skull. The owner of the box was probably a spiritualist and may even have considered themselves to be an ancient Roman witch or sorcerer. The necklaces are beautiful though, so at least the owner looked good while they were summoning evil spirits. Although the Allies ultimately won World War II, the Nazi war machine was vast and mighty, and traces of it are still turning up in unexpected places. The island of Big Tuiters, which is in the Gulf of Finland close to St. Petersburg, is the latest to turn up a Nazi discovery. A team digging through sand in the area found a whole Nazi bunker hiding below 10 feet of sand, obviously buried on purpose. It's thought that this was a German command bunker, defended by an anti-aircraft battery gun, which has been perfectly preserved. Big Tudors was turned into a fortress by the Nazis during their occupation of the island, so it makes sense that there would be extensive defenses here. They were finally driven from the island in 1944, and left many of their pieces of equipment behind them in a rush to get away. This particular bunker would have been the place from which a Nazi commandant would have strategized against Soviet air raids, or taken shelter from the barrage of the Baltic Fleet's artillery. Just as some human beings prefer to eat vegetables and plants, some plants have a preference for flesh when it comes to their own meal choices. The existence of the northern pitcher plant, which is more colorfully referred to as the turtle sock, isn't a recent discovery. What scientists have only just found out about them is that they eat vertebrates, and they have a particular taste for young salamanders. The plants can only be found in Canada, and the discovery makes them the first known vertebrate-eating plants anywhere on the North American continent. When biologist Alex Smith spotted a salamander trapped in one of the plants on a recent expedition, he assumed it must be a freak occurrence. He decided to check more turtle socks to see if he could find any more, and was shocked to find salamanders in one in every five plants he looked at. Studies are now ongoing into how the plants attract salamanders in the first place, and visitors to the Algonquin Park are being advised to keep their children away from them. Arachnophobes, look away now. A brand new species of spider has been discovered in the Moltinsky Lakes region of Altai. It was first observed by researchers from Altai State University, and from the limited number of pictures they were able to take of their newly discovered species, they believe it belongs to the Lycosidae family of arachnids, the genus we know better 
as wolf spiders. A closer examination was impossible because it seems the spiders weren't happy about being discovered. As soon as they noticed people taking pictures of them, they ran away and disappeared below cracks in the rock. One or two of them have since been captured and are now being more closely studied under laboratory conditions. It's thought that spiders like this don't live anywhere in the world other than on the highlands of the Altai Mountains and share their territory with another species of spider, which is already known to science. You've heard of the duck-billed platypus, but have you ever heard of the duck-billed dinosaur? You have now. Meet the hadrosaurid, which walked the earth around 80 million years ago. There are several different offshoots of hadrosaurid, including a previously unknown type, which has now been identified thanks to the discovery of a complete skull in Texas, USA. The fossilized head was found some time ago, but the discovery has only just been announced to the world after the completion of peer-reviewed testing at the Institute of Paleontology in Barcelona, Spain. The nose of the dinosaur was curved in a manner not unlike the beak of an eagle, and its wide lower jaw was likely used as a trowel for the purpose of shoveling things into its mouth. It might not be the prettiest dinosaur you've ever seen, but it probably had an impressive bite. It wouldn't have been all that interested in eating you, though. It was a herbivore. The charming-looking dinosaur has been given the name Aquilarinus polymensis. Earlier on in this video, we discussed the size and scale of the German military operation during the 1940s. This huge bunker is another astonishing example. At their peak, the German army's defenses stretched all the way from Norway to the border where France meets Spain. A major part of those defenses was the Barari Nordvik, a series of 80 bunkers built by the Dutch under duress from their German occupiers. They range from barrage bunkers with 12-foot thick walls to wooden shower rooms. Over 180 soldiers would have called this temporary network home. The most notable is the S-414 Fire Leader Bunker, which was three stories high and the largest German construction of its kind. Its construction required a massive 7,500 cubic meters of concrete. When the war was over, local children used to come and play in the underground world the Nazis had left behind. But by the 1970s, they had been completely filled in with sand, sealed up at all entrances, and then left alone. Parts of it were reopened once more in 2001 as the Atlantic Wall Museum of Nordvik, which at first was in the old ammunition bunkers. More recently, the massive S-414 bunker was cleared of sand, and the museum has moved into it. NASA are the experts when it comes to all matters relating to outer space but they can't be watching all of space all the time. They need the help of citizen volunteers to assist them. And one of them has just provided them with a remarkable discovery, a seemingly new type of star. It's a distant white dwarf, no larger than planet Earth, but probably once around the same size as our sun. And it's surrounded by several rings of debris and dust. Not only is it the coldest and oldest white dwarf star that NASA has ever identified, but they also say it's the first time rings have ever been observed around a white dwarf. There's no currently known cause that would lead to rings like this forming around a white dwarf. Usually any material orbiting around a white dwarf should disappear around the 100 million year mark. So the fact that this star is billions of years old and appears to have held on to its decorative accessories is currently providing puzzlement at the world's most famous space agency. These days, when we think of Loch Ness, we think of the famous and elusive Loch Ness Monster. It's not just people of our era who have had an interest in that part of Scotland, though. It was also very important to the people who lived close to the lake during the Bronze Age. Archaeologists digging close to the lake have recently uncovered evidence that it was once a sacred site and played host to a number of important burial rituals. A strange stone-lined grave was found in the area in 2015. And now a similar second grave has been found, one which dates back 4,000 years. At the bottom of the grave was a beaker pot, which likely contained an offering for the person buried to take with them into the afterlife. As the archeologists study the land more closely, they're increasingly convinced that both of the graves were once covered by large cairns, which have been flattened and destroyed by centuries of plowing in the fields. Centuries of weathering have taken away the definition of these ancient stone carvings in the Altai territory of Russia. 
which might go some way to explaining why nobody noticed them for such a long time. If you look at them closely, you might just be able to make out the shape they were in when they were first carved some 12,000 years ago. They represent a dragon and a griffin. The granite blocks they're cut into weigh 120 tons each, and so the prehistoric people who carved them would have had to make a significant effort to carve into the stones. Scientists are currently unsure how they did it, or even why they did it. The carving of the dragon is thought to be the oldest representation of such a creature anywhere in Russia, and doesn't appear to share any design elements with the traditional Chinese dragon, suggesting that it's an original Siberian creation. The griffin is even more impressive, 18 feet long and eight feet high, covered in intricate carvings and artificial openings, which may have had ceremonial uses. It's known that the griffin was revered in Scythian culture, so they may have been inspired by these much older monuments. We all know that Snow White is just a fairy tale. So why is it that people believe that her gravestone has recently been discovered in Germany? Well, the answer is that all fairy tales come from somewhere. In the case of Snow White, she's believed to have been inspired by Baroness Sophia Maria von Ertal, who was born into wealth in the country in 1725. Her mother died when she was only 18, and she had a difficult relationship with her father's second wife. To boost her confidence, she had a mirror engraved with the words, self-love in the frame, and spoke to herself in it to gain confidence. That was her magic mirror, and near her home was a mine where all the workers were small people or children. It doesn't take much to put the story together from there. The church where the Baroness was buried after she died was destroyed during the 19th century, and her headstone was thought to have been destroyed along with it until it turned up in the hands of private collectors. It's now been given to the Bamberg Diocesan Museum. There are millions of motor racing fans all over the world, and so it would be logical to assume that any retired motor car would be the pride and joy of any collector's fleet. That apparently wasn't so for this ultra-rare Mazda variant RX-7 racer, which raced in the 24-hour Le Mans race in 1982, but then vanished off the face of the earth for 35 years. Now it's been found again. It's thought to be the very last Mazda 254i model anywhere in the world. The power under the hood sounds impressive. A dual rotor 13B engine capable of 296 horsepower, but the performance of the car at the race wasn't good, and the model was discontinued. It now transpires that this car was quietly shipped to Japan, painted pink, and raced in the JPSC series. After that, it spent years in a garage in Okayama. Now it's been found again. It's receiving an engine rebuild and extensive maintenance work, and it will then return to racing, this time in classic car events. This might not be the most attractive human face you've ever laid eyes on, but you should cut this woman, who's been named Hilda, a little slack. Considering she's around 2,000 years old, we think she's doing just fine. Hilda's face has been modeled around one of the oldest Iron Age skulls ever found in Scotland. It's thought that she was a druid, but lived a comfortable life on the island of Stornoway. Her skull was discovered in 1833, but only recently has modern technology allowed a realistic representation of her face to be created. If you think her mouth and jaw look a little strange, it's because she didn't have any teeth when she died. The average life expectancy of an Iron Age woman in Hilda's local area was around 31 years. But thanks to her status and privilege, she lived well into her 60s, even though her poor diet caused her severe dental problems. Druids like Hilda were masters of lawmaking and politics during the Iron Age, but legends say they were also interested in the occult. Could this be the face of an ancient witch? Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.